knees, gently close your eyes and just simply breathe. I don't know how many of you have been doing this, but it works. Notice the energy of the space that you're practicing in. Notice any messages that your body is giving you. I think this experience of us all seeing each other this morning is going to, you know, you're going to feel that in your body as well as in your breath, in your spirit, in your heart. Just enjoy this arrival process into your practice and on your mat. I, for those of you who are joining now and didn't hear, I was mentioning that yesterday I had a mask on and I realized that people couldn't see me smile. So I had to tell them I was smiling. Here you can smile as much or as little as you want and we can see it. You're in a very safe place right now. So be right where your feet are and let everything be a part of your practice and your experience. Let your body, your spirit, your breath all be a part of this this morning. Gently draw your hands together at heart center. Thumb knuckles can reach toward your sternum. So there is a little bit of you reaching your hands in, but there's also a lot of you reaching your heart forward here. So when you sit with a spine very erect, you'll find your vertebrae, the front side of your vertebrae of your spine will reach forward through. You may even feel an energetic connection there to your thumb knuckles. That just tells you that your heart's open, that you're ready for this. And if you're not feeling that, that's okay too. That's what our practice is all about, is noticing when we're ready, noticing when we're not, and being willing to be with whichever one is there this morning. Finish your exhale. To so breathe everything out. In that space, set an intention for your practice. It starts with I am, I have, I feel. Put yourself on a path this morning for this practice, maybe for your day. And finish your exhale again. Take a big, full breath in. Exhale slowly. Inhale. Exhale slowly. Breath in. Bend it out. Gently open up your eyes, come into tabletop pose. So hands underneath shoulders, knees underneath hips, about those distances apart. When you're there, set up a strong foundation through your spine. So spine is long, crown of your head reaches forward, seat reaches back. Cow pose with your inhale, chin and seat reach up. See if you can notice a little separation between your sit bones there, separation along your collarbones. Breathe in deeply. As you exhale, move to cat pose as you press your spine up and draw your chin and seat down into center. Take another inhale. Come to cow pose. Breathe it in all the way. As you exhale, spine lifts up. For cat pose. One more of those. Big, full, deep breath in. Cow pose. And cat pose with your exhale. Come back to a neutral spine. When you get there, take a breath in. As you exhale, look over your right shoulder. Send your hips a little to the left, almost like you're chasing your tail a little bit. Give your side body a stretch. Get a sense of grounding through your knees and your hands come back to center when you exhale. Take a breath in, exhale, and go the other way, looking over your left shoulder. See if you can find your hips, even as you move them away from your gaze. Come back to center. Gaze is down in between your hands. Spine is long, all the way crown to seat. Extend one leg, doesn't matter which one, long behind you, toes curl to the floor. So those of you who know me know we're headed right to plank. It's one of my favorite poses. 
Next leg comes long, toes curl under, knees are lifted from the floor, plank pose. Hips are shoulder height, head is shoulder height, so keep everything level here for a little bit and just start to really come into an enthusiastic, very sincere breath. In and out. Maybe here, tuck your chin into your chest a little. Just notice what happens when you drop the weight of your head and intentionally tuck it in, then lift your head up all the way. Notice how that feels through your cervical spine to lift up, then come back to a neutral spine again. Crown of your head forward. Breathe in and out. Take a full deep breath in. When you exhale, elbows point to the back of your mat, slowly lower down to your bellies. Feel free to put your knees down in the process. Take your time getting there. You know I like you to build strength on the way down. When you're there, tops of your feet come down, big toes touch, hands are underneath your shoulders. Lift your chin and chest for a baby cobra and slowly take a breath in here. When you exhale, lower back down. Take this on your own pace. Inhale, come to baby cobra. I want you to really use your breath as the when to do this. Lower down with your exhale. Do that one more time. Lift up when you inhale. Lower down when you exhale. Then curl your toes under, keeping knees in line with ankles, hips, shoulders, head, push back up to high plank. Nice. When you get there, press all of your air out. So pressing everything out leaves a feeling of excitement. Take a breath in. As you exhale, elbows again point to the back of your mat, lower halfway down. Tops of your feet come into your mat. Arms for tall, upward facing dog. Hips can draw a little bit forward. Lift your chest open, shoulders back, and then slowly come back down to the floor. Good. With your inhale, tabletop pose as you exhale, downward facing dog. First one. Pedal your feet out. So I've noticed in my home practice now, I don't know why I didn't notice this in studio. In my home practice, I've really noticed a sense of um, my heels being lifted. Even when I'm told to bring them down, I think I'm still bracing myself for what's coming next. There is no next right now in this moment. So really let yourself relax and soften into the strength that you feel in this pose right here, right now. You know as well as I do, you're not staying here. But while you are here, be fully present to it and in it. Big, full, deep breaths in and out. All your exhales coming fully out so that you have that sense of excitement for your practice. Breathing, set your drishti. This is where your eyes are going to go. Your drishti is where your eye gaze is. Put your eyes where you want them to go every time you come back into this pose so that you're not looking for something else. You have found it every time you come back here. Finish your exhale. Take a full deep breath in. As you exhale, look to your hands, walk your feet forward. They land hip distance apart for ragdoll pose. Knees can be bent a lot. Upper body could lay right on your thighs, especially if you literally just rolled out of bed. You may really prefer to have super bent knees. You can see you all know this practice well. You either sway side to side, maybe front to back. Find your way through your version of ragdoll. Hands come down to your mat. Bring your feet together. When your feet are together, come back to ragdoll. So there's a little bit of lift up, I think, to bring our feet together. Come back to ragdoll with your feet together. And then from there, intentionally take a breath in to lift up halfway. Hands could go maybe on your shin. Spend a little time in this halfway lift, understanding the energetic infusion that maybe you feel here. Maybe it's an output for you. 
Your exhale, fold in half. Next inhale, mountain pose. Push your feet down, rise up. Yeah, good. We're not going to see your faces now. That that's okay. <laughs> Just smile, laugh if you need to. Once you're up there, interlace your fingers. Press your palms to the ceiling. Take a full deep breath in. As you exhale, press your palms to the right. Hips go left. Give yourself a side body stretch here. Take as much time as you need stretching. Maybe it's a little bit of a back and forth stretch from neutral, neutral to stretch. Come back to center. When you inhale, your exhale takes your hands left and hips right. Nice. Come back to center. Hands reach up. Fingers are no longer interlacing. Take a breath in. Exhale and fold in half. Halfway lift, inhale, plant your hands, step your feet back, high plank with an exhale. Take a breath in here, we'll pause on this one. As you exhale, lower halfway or to the ground, your choice. If you go halfway down, your inhale is an upward facing dog. If you went to the floor, your inhale is a cobra. Downward facing dog with your exhale. So we'll speed up the pace just a little. Let's get your heart vibrating and moving and feeling maybe a little bit more than you did this first time around and just get your blood and body warmed up. Very simple, finish your exhale. Take a full deep breath in, empty it. Look to your hands, float or walk forward. Halfway lift, inhale. Fold, exhale, mountain pose, rise and reach, maybe even look up between your hands, fold with your exhale. Halfway lift, inhale, plant your hands, step or float back, you're floating back, you're right into chaturanga, if you're stepping back, lower to chaturanga, upward facing, or you can go to your mat for cobra. Downward facing dog, exhale. Full deep breath in, press it out. Look to your hands, float or walk forward. Halfway lift, inhale, fold, exhale. Mountain pose, Realize as you press your feet and root down. Fold in half, exhale. Lift halfway, breathe in, plant your hands, step or float back. Chaturanga, I'll keep it simple for cueing, upward facing and downward facing dog. Know you always have choices. Big full deep breath in, empty it. Look to your hands, float or walk forward. Halfway lift, inhale, fold, exhale. Mountain pose, rise and reach, fold, exhale. Halfway lift, step or float back, chaturanga. Upward facing, inhale, downward facing dog, exhale. Nice, pause here, check in with your breath, check in with any body sensations that you may have ignored while you were trying to move and open. Then lift your right leg as you inhale, bend your knee, open up your hip. So opening your hip is, involves having a straighter left leg, a bent right leg, and then turning your hips toward the side wall. Shoulders stay facing the ground. Maybe you work through your ankles, spread your toes. Maybe you lengthen your leg and bend. Maybe you don't have any movement at all. Maybe for you, it all comes through stillness and observation. Lengthen your leg back up with your inhale. As you exhale, hips are square to the floor. Step your foot forward to the top of your mat. Left hand stays down inside your foot. Right hand reaches up for the twist. So your hips were open before to the side wall. Now your chest is open to the side wall. Now your hands are far apart from each other, opening your collarbones, bringing your shoulder blades together behind you. Take another breath in. 
Exhale, right hand comes back down to your mat. Step to the top of your mat, right into halfway lift. Inhale, fold, exhale. Mountain pose, inhale. Chair pose with your exhales. So feet are together inside edges or hip distance apart. It's mountain pose from the waist up. Chair pose is starting to bring in that sense of lunging where your knees are bent. You get your hips back going back behind your heels. Your chest pitches forward a little in front of your toes. So weight is right over your heels. Bring it all there so that you balance what's moving behind your weight and what's moving in front of your weight. Take a full deep breath in here. Exhale, fold in half. Halfway lift, inhale, plant your hands, step or float back for chaturanga. Upward facing dog, inhale, downward facing dog, exhale. Lift your left leg, bend and open. So same idea on this side, it's a different side, so play around with what this side needs, not comparing it to your other side. Keeping your shoulders pointed to the floor, opening your hips to the side wall, opening your toes, fingers, getting all your bases of support. Lengthen your leg long as you inhale, hips face the floor. Take a breath in. As you exhale, step your foot to the top of your mat. Other hand comes up for the twist. Beautiful. Now shoulders and chest open to the side wall while hips stay facing down. Breathe in and out of your twists. Understand the importance of giving your inner organs a hug, your lymph nodes. Another breath in. As you exhale, hand comes down to your mat. Step your back foot up to the top. Halfway lift. Inhale. Fold. Exhale. Mountain pose, inhale, chair pose with your exhale. Come back into it. Hands can always come to heart center if you've been doing something through your arms or shoulders lately that's creating excess tension. We're not adding tension by taking chair pose. We're investigating what tension feels like and how we respond to it. Take airplane arms maybe as a variation here. Palms with the floor, collarbones open and lengthen wide. Just notice maybe a little lift and lower of your hips till you find center of gravity. Just notice how your muscles feel with a little bit of action or a little bit more stillness. Take another breath in. As you exhale, fold in half. Half lift, inhale, plant your hands, step or float back, chaturanga. Upward facing dog, inhale, downward facing dog, exhale. So we'll put that together as a flow. Go at your own pace. You know where we'll meet. Seems like you're all feeling comfortable with this. So finish your exhale. Right leg lifts, inhale, bend your knee and open with your exhale. Come back to a long leg, inhale, step to the top of your mat with your exhale. Open for your twist, inhale, hand comes back down with your exhale. Step top of your mat, halfway lift, inhale, fold, exhale. Mountain pose, breathe in, sit into chair, exhale. Take a breath in here. Fold in half, exhale. Halfway lift, breathe in. Step or float back with your exhale. Chaturanga, upward facing. Press your palms down, good. Downward facing dog, exhale. Left leg lifts, inhale. Bend and open, exhale. Leg comes long, inhale. Step your foot to the top of your mat with your exhale. Hand reaches up for the twist, breathe in. Hand comes back down to your mat, breathe out, step forward. Halfway lift, inhale, fold, exhale. Mountain pose, breathe in. 
Chair pose. Exhale. Take a breath in here in chair. Fold. Exhale. Halfway lift. Inhale. Step or flow back. Chaturanga. Upward facing dog. Inhale. Downward facing dog. Exhale. We're going to shorten that up and change it up a little bit. So take a breath in. Lift your right leg. Step your at the top of your mat with your exhale. Open up for your twist with your inhale. Hand comes back down. Exhale. Step to the top of your mat. Halfway lift. Inhale. Fold. Exhale. Chair pose. Skip the mountain here. Good. Fold. Exhale. So taking a couple poses out changes things. Halfway lift. Step or float back. Chaturanga, upward facing, inhale, downward facing dog, exhale, left leg lifts, inhale, step to the top of your mat, exhaling, open for your twist, inhale, hand comes down, step to the top of your mat, exhale, halfway lift, breathe in, Fold, breathe out, chair pose, inhale, fold, exhale. Halfway lift, step or float back, chaturanga, upward facing dog, inhale, downward facing dog, exhale, pause and breathe. Maybe paddle out your legs here a little. Maybe an arm needs to lift to the ceiling for a twist and down dog, or maybe it comes to your low back to get a sense of grounding through their other hand. Maybe there's something else speaking to you. Just listen and pay attention. Coming back to downward facing dog, finish your exhale. Lift your right leg, take a breath in. As you exhale, step to the top of your mat. Back heel spins down, open up for a warrior two. Take your time, there's no rush. Front knee bends to the front of your mat. Toes are closer to the front edge than your front knee. Back toes point to the side of your mat. Hands float above feet. Again, if your arms are tired, bring your hands to heart center for a moment. Let your shoulders relax before you try to engage. Find a gaze. Keep it soft, your gaze. Keep it focused and attentive with a softness around the edges. That'll bring a softness to your jawline, to your lips, your thoughts. Finish your exhale. Take a breath in as you exhale, side angle pose. So hands reach 12 to six o'clock. You could put your forearm across your front thigh if you like. Try not to press into your front thigh with your weight. Keep your weight very centered, very held by your rib cage on both sides, very held by your breath. Finish your exhale. Take a breath in. As you exhale, warrior two. Flip your front palm. Take a breath in here, reverse warrior. So lifting your front palm up. Backhand is light on your back leg or around your low back. Reach up first, get a lot of space, and then maybe back a little bit more. Notice where your chin and jaw are in relation to your breath. Do you have them in a place where you can breathe freely and openly? Could you bend your front knee a little bit more maybe just to add a little extra juice? Take a breath in. As you exhale, hands come down to your mat. Back heel spins up. Step back to high plank. Lower halfway, take your time breathing in for upward facing dog. Take your time breathing out as you press back to downward facing dog. Left leg lifts, breathe in. Step your foot to the top of your mat, exhaling, spin your back heel down, warrior two. 
give you time here just to know the cues with your body. Listen to the cues your body is giving you. Listen to the cues your breath is giving you. Try not to think. Are you breathing loud enough for you to hear it? Finish your exhale. Take a breath in. As you exhale, side angle pose. Reach 12 to 6 o'clock. Or front forearm across your thigh. Notice the strength that you have to hold your body's weight as you change the plane of your upper body in relation to your lower body. It's as close as we get to math in a yoga practice, I promise. <laughs> I like to talk about planes. Nice. But as your exhale, take a full deep breath in. As you exhale, warrior two, flip your front palm with an inhale, reverse. Open up, reaching up first. Maybe bend your front knee a little more deeply as you reach back, after you reach back. After you reach into more breath to see what's available to you energetically. Sometimes things are available, sometimes they're not. And we don't need to judge it. We don't need to react to it. Just notice it. Be aware. Finish your exhale. Take a full deep breath in. As you exhale, hands come down to your mat. Back heel spins up. Step back and lower halfway. Take your time fully exhaling. Upward facing. Inhale. Downward facing dog. Exhale. Flow through that one time as well. Just to keep your heart and energy moving. To keep your discovery Moving through your body, finish an exhale here. Take a breath in, lifting your right leg. Step it to the top of your mat, exhale. Warrior two, big full breath in. Side angle pose, exhale. Reverse, inhale. Hands down to your mat with your exhale. Step back and lower. Upward facing dog, inhale, downward facing dog, exhale. Left leg lifts, breathe in, step forward, breathing out. Warrior two, embody the pose, side angle, embody your breath as well. Reverse, hands come down to your mat. Push the ground away as you step back and lower. Upward facing, inhale. Downward facing dog, exhale. Pause here with your drishti. Notice how your body has changed as your drishti stays the same in down dog. Another reason to set our drishti is we notice what is changing within when we gaze at the same thing. When we're looking outward, we have less distraction to notice what's going on within. Finish your exhale here. Take a full deep breath in. As you exhale, look to your hands, float or walk forward. Halfway lift, inhale, fold, exhale, chair pose. Set it up so that your hips are behind your heels, your heads may be a little bit forward. So your center of gravity is right over heel. Set your drishti again to notice what's going on within, more than looking at what's happening outside. Hands come together at heart center if they're not. Take a full deep breath in here. As you exhale, upper body turns to the right. Sink your hips down then to create the twist. Maybe keep your head in line with your shoulders here. Sometimes our head wants to dip down. Keep it a little bit level here. Notice where you need to keep your chin to keep your breath running freely for a twist. Let your heart open to the side wall. Take a full deep breath in here. As you exhale, fold in half. 
separate your feet, hip distance apart, big toe hold. So peace fingers and thumb wrap around your big toes. You could try lifting halfway here, see if that gives you some length. Then fold, continuing with a lengthening process into your big toe hold. Let yourself unwind here a little. Some things might tense up more in order to create an unwind in other places. Then release your feet. Toe heel them back together. Halfway lift, inhale. Fold, exhale. Back to chair pose. Uttakatasana. It's a mouthful for a pose. It's a mouthful for your body. It's a full experience. Hands come together at heart center. Take a breath in. As you exhale, upper body turns to the left. Then start to sink your hips down. Chest can stay pretty lifted here to create the twist. And that's the beautiful thing about yoga is we put ourselves in full experiences and notice how it feels to try to breathe when we're fully feeling something. Sometimes things shut down and that's okay. There's no judgment there. They're just, it is what it is. Nice. Open up just a little bit more. Yeah, beautiful. Finish your exhale. Take a full deep breath in. As you exhale, fold in half. Separate your feet. Uh, take them out to the edges of your mat. Point your toes out. Heels come in. You could lift halfway here, letting your fingertips maybe brush the floor. As you exhale, slowly sink your hips down, coming into a squat. <clears throat> Once hips come down, you can bring your hands together at heart center. Once your hips come down fully, then engage through your legs to lift them up just a little, maybe an inch. You'll notice maybe your chest lifts, maybe your shoulders roll back a little. As you engage to lift your hip, hips up, your upper body engages as well. Becomes a little bit more alert, a little bit more in tune with the activity of what you're doing. Beautiful. Finish your exhale. Take a breath in. As you exhale, hands come down to your mat. Slowly lift your hips up as you walk your feet back together. Halfway lift. Inhale. Full. Exhale, come up for mountain pose. Press your feet down, breathe in as you reach up. Hands to heart center as you exhale, eyes closed here. As you inhale, gently lift your right heel away from the ground. Then turn your heel toward the inside edge of your left leg. Let it rest there with your eyes closed. Send your arms big for tree pose, keeping your eyes closed. Let yourself wobble. Let yourself understand where your balance is here. If you're someone who never lets yourself keep your toes and the balls of your feet on the ground, let them stay here. If you always keep your toes and balls of your feet on the ground, maybe lift them up here. Even with the eyes closed, breathe in and out. Notice what it takes to feel in balance. Does it take more breath? Does it take more sense of what's going on inside? Finish your exhale. Take a breath in. As you exhale, hands to heart center. Take another breath in. When you exhale, right heel comes back down to your mat and feet come together. With your inhale, lift your left knee or left heel. Then as you exhale, turn your heel in toward the inside of your right leg. Let it rest there. Then take your arms up, or as a variation on this, you can interlace your fingers at your low back and open. Keeping your eyes closed, notice where you want your left foot to be. Your ego might want it in one place. Your body and balance might ask for it to be in a different place. So how do you find equanimity between the two? Only you can do that work. Finish your exhale. Take a full deep breath in. 
As you exhale, hands come together at heart center. Take another inhale. As you exhale, release your left heel. Nice. Feet are together. Open up your eyes. Look up. Reach up. Inhale. Fold with your exhale. Halfway lift. Inhale. Put your hands. Step your feet back to the back of your mat. Back into another high plank. Feet are together here inside edges touch. Take a breath in. As you exhale, heels go to the right. Lift your left hand up for side plank. Let your right palm plug in. Let the right side of your body push the left side up and open. Take any variation on side plank that you know and love. It could be a knee down. It could be a leg up could be reaching overhead. It could be stillness as your variation. That counts too. And next exhale, slowly bring your left hand down to your mat. Heels come to center. Take a breath in. Heels to the left. Right hand reaches up. Side plank. Breathe open across your chest. Open across the left side of your body underneath so it can support your right side opening up on top. Breathe in and out. Your next exhale, hand slowly reaches down to your mat. Heels reach back up to center. Take a breath, lower down to your bellies with your exhale. Let your arms relax next to you. Let your cheek turn to the side and find the texture of your mat underneath. Notice here too, there is a placement for your chin here as you lay on your belly that helps you breathe more fully, more deeply. Let your front side body be heavy on your mat so your breath side gets the lightness of your breath the ease of your breath. Bring your chin and forehead back to neutral, hands underneath your shoulders, moving back to Cobra, the queen of all back bends. So big toes touch, tops of your feet, press into your mat, knees and thighs will lift a little with that energy of pressing your feet down. Keep that energy through your legs, lift your chin and chest, little baby Cobra. Lengthen, breathe, feel. Your exhale, slowly lower down. Arms come to your side, other cheek may be down on your mat. If it bothers your neck to turn a cheek, then I encourage you to keep your forehead on your mat, maybe on top of stacked palms. You can certainly move through your legs if you get some release through your low back with movement. Bring your chin and forehead to center. Arms stay at your sides, palms face down. Thumbs could point up just a little bit to the ceiling here. Roll your shoulders down your back so the front sides come away from your mat. With your inhale, Lift everything slowly away from your mat. Let gravity pull you as you lift. That's where some of the work and energy is. This is locust pose. Breathe in and out. See if you can lengthen across your collarbones a bit. Maybe lift your legs just a little bit. Take a full deep breath in here. As you exhale, slowly lower down. The other cheek comes to your mat. The palms flip. Relax everything. Let yourself feel the lightness in your backside body again as the front side feels heavy. Take a full deep breath in here. As you exhale, forehead and chin come to your mat. Arms reach forward, palms face each other, thumbs point up. With your inhale, again, like you did with locust, this is a variation. Take everything away from your mat slowly. 
Notice what engages in your body energetically to lift your limbs away from the floor here. To open your heart. All back bends are heart opening, even the ones that don't necessarily feel like it. Your exhale, slowly lower down. Other cheek can come to your mat. Let yourself fully relax into this moment. Slowly as you like, flip over onto your backs from here. So a little bit of, I like to call it a pancake move, a little bit of a flip over. When you get there, bend at your knees, heels go close to your seat, hip distance apart. Shoulders tuck underneath you. So we're just going to continue the back bending process here. Press your low back into your mat. Then when you take a breath in, keep the length, lift your hips, drawing your sternum toward your chin, maybe tucking your shoulders underneath you for bridge pose. Hands might interlace underneath you. They might press into your mat, depending on the variation of a back bend that you need today. Keep your eyes open and steady so that the openness invites energy in, but the steadiness invites distraction to stay away, to stay at a distance. It keeps a boundary, if you will, your drishti. keeps a boundary for your attention. Take another breath in here, maybe lift just a little higher. Then with your exhale, slowly lower your hips down. Take time when you get to your low spine to not group that together when you lay it down. See if you can separate your low spine too as you lower. Take a quick break here, full breath in and out. Then set up another bridge pose. Your inhale, lifting your hips. With your exhale, settling shoulders underneath you. Breathe fully. So your knees reach forward toward the end of your mat. It lengthens the front side of your muscle on your legs. Those are your quadriceps. You don't do a lot in every practice to lengthen your quadriceps. So do that here so that your back can grow longer. Lengthen your core so that your back can grow longer. Finish your exhale. Take a breath in. As you exhale, slowly lower down. Again, one little piece at a time. Comes to your mat. When you get there, get a release that you need so you can set up one more bridge. If you prefer wheel, try coming into bridge first, so setting up your low body. Heels are close to your seat. With an inhale, hips lift. If you're moving into wheel, hands come up by your shoulders and ears. Palms press in very much like they do down dog. Fingers point toward your heels. Arms lengthen. Chest expands, belly expands, in bridge or wheel, doesn't matter which variation you're in, you're getting expansion, so breathe into that. Plenty of room for your breath to join whatever's happening in your body. Finish your exhale. Take a breath in. As you exhale, slowly lower down. One vertebrae at a time. When you get there, take a full deep breath in and out before you come to Supta Baddha Konasana, soles of your feet together. Just give yourself a pause and then come into a restorative hip opening. So knees gently move away from center to the side. They continue to be pulled to the floor with Mother Nature's natural force of gravity. That's the beautiful thing about this pose is nature does the work for you. One hand could be on your belly, one on your heart. Notice any vibration that you feel. So 
Back bends are heart openers. Your heart has its own electromagnetic field. And that field of vibration can be felt six to eight feet away from you. Your people will feel your vibration. The trees around you when you walk outside will feel your vibration when you get to that distance. Your pets, the grass, the wind, the food that you prepare in your kitchen. At least start to draw your knees together. If you're finding some magic happening in Sukta Baddha Konasana, of course, I encourage you to stay. To move into reverse or reclined cow face pose, knees come together, feet could come together. Cross your right leg over your left. You're crossing at your thighs. Draw your knees in toward your chest, and that will take your feet out to the outside edges of your mats that direction. Hands could reach for opposite ankle. Maybe your shin is a better reach. For me, if I hold on to my ankles, I get too much pressure on my ankles and knees. I need to reach a little higher or flex ankles, and that will help take away the pressure. So as your knees get closer to your chest, you'll feel more lengthening across your hips. Maybe one hip in particular over the other, maybe not for you. You might feel with your knees coming into your chest a lengthening along your backside body as well. Keep your chin in a place where you have full breath for hip opening. Your hips are a good place to send ideas for later consideration, feelings for later consideration understandings for later consideration. So here's your time to explore. What have you maybe packed in there for consideration later? Not to think about it, but to feel about it. Breath will help you get in touch with the feeling. Maybe you still need ujjayi breath here if your yoga space isn't very warm to continue to warm as you open. Maybe you're warm enough and it's simply paying attention to your breath coming in and out. Begin to release your feet slowly with your legs still crossed. Let your feet come back to your mat. Uncross. So both feet are on your mat. Maybe just a little bit of a mini bridge here. Maybe some sort of release for your ankles, for your knees. Setting it up on the other side. Left leg crosses over right at your thighs. As you start to draw your knees in toward your chest, your feet will naturally separate toward the edges of your mat. Hands reach for opposite ankle or foot or shin. Protect your ankles and knees with either flexed feet or where you hold on here. And use the strength of your legs and your core to bring your knees into center. You don't have to rely on the strength of your arms or shoulders. Is there something different coming forward with feelings on this side or are you still working on the same? 
Again, there's no judgment of what the answer is. It's just about discovery. Very slowly begin to release, giving your hips time to let go of that experience. Once your feet are to your mat, uncross. Find any release that you need. And then come back to feet on the floor, hip distance apart. Knees are bent. Cross your right ankle over your left knee. Keeping your figure four legs, coming into a reverse half pigeon-ish, set your right foot to your mat on the left side. Arms are out to a T. So we're not moving quite yet into the surrender. I'd like you to interlace your fingers behind your head. Then lift your head and shoulders straight up away from your mat. Not going to the side, but straight up from here. Do 15 lifts and lowers, not coming all the way back down to your mat, but get your oblique muscles really engaged. A little bit of core activity here. Keep your elbows wide, reaching side wall to side wall. You're counting at your own pace. When you finish, and set your upper body down. Draw your legs back to center and then give yourself a full body stretch. Your whole body go long and reach and feel your breath move in and out. When you're finished with your stretch, you bend at your knees again. Cross your left ankle over your right knee. Arms are out to a T. Take your left foot to the floor on the right side of your mat, keeping your figure four legs. Then interlace your fingers behind your head. Head, shoulders, elbows all on the same plane. Lift your upper body. From there, lift up and down 15 times. Again, not releasing your upper body quite to the floor. Keep that engagement, keep that energy. When you have finished the 15 on this side, come back again to a full body stretch. Slowly moving away from core strengthening to a release. The release part is important so that when you twist, your muscles are long. And then arms can come back out to a T, bending at your knees. Simply take both knees to the right side of your mat. Eyes could be closed, maybe gazing to the left. Supine twist. This is where we surrender. And surrender is not a giving up. Surrender is a process of letting things be. Let your body now be in its energy source, in its feelings, in its breath. Bring your knees back to center, gaze back to center. Maybe lift your hips up a little so that your twist comes back to a neutral place. Then take both knees to the left. Maybe gaze comes to the right. 
And notice the process if you just let your body be here. Let go of any expectations, any work or effort. What do you notice in the letting be? Is there a peace within you? Is there a balance? Is your breath free? Come back to center, both gaze and knees. Maybe one more full body stretch, a big full inhale. And as you exhale, set up your Shavasana pose. One limb at a time, pay attention. Here's my right arm in Shavasana. Here's my left, here's my right leg, my left leg, my hands, my feet. Maybe tuck your shoulders underneath you just a little so that your open heart has a little more room. Soften your lips, your jaw. Let your tongue fall away from the roof of your mouth. Notice for just a moment, a couple rounds of breath, what letting your body be here feels like. What does it feel like to let yourself be here? And just sink into that experience. Begin to deepen your breath. Bring some movement to your fingers. Bring some movement to your toes. More and more movement to your body as you bring in energy with your breath, eventually Bending at your knees, roll on to your right side body. Right into seedling pose. It's interesting. We were just ordering garden seeds last night. This is the time of year to plant something new. Let something new from your yoga practice just grow, even the slightest bit here will eventually take up the space that it needs. Keeping your eyes closed, press up to a comfortable seat. Hands together at heart center. Sit in your intention. Sit in your strength. Sit in your heart. 
Finish your exhale. Take a full breath in. Exhale. Inhale. Exhale. The knuckles come up to your third eye, right in the center of your forehead. Take a breath in here. As you exhale, fold forward. The light in me sees and honors the light in you. Namaste. Thank you so, so much for sharing your practice with me. It meant so much. Thank you, Matt and Susie.